वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स केम शो मजा मा नमस्ते एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी लेक्चर नंबर 11 व्हिच इज फार्म मैनेजमेंट डिसीजंस ऑलरेडी वी हैव कवर्ड सम बेसिक कांसेप्ट्स एज वेल एज एडवांस कांसेप्ट्स दिस फार्म मैनेजमेंट डिसीजंस इज समवेयर इन बिटवीन राइट वी हैव सीन एडवांस एडवांस कांसेप्ट्स इन दिस मॉड्यूल लाइक वी हैव सीन फार्म प्लानिंग वी हैव सीन फार्म बजेटिंग राइट एंड वी हैव सीन बेसिक कांसेप्ट्स लाइक what is farm management what is the difference between agriculture production economics and farm management what is the relationship between farm management and other disciplines right this is somewhere in between so let us go to this lecture lecture number 11 in your theory material farm management decisions some basics first what is farm farm is what farm is a land with a fixed boundary wherein farmers rear crop farmers grow crop or rare animals for economic returns under a common management or operation ship this is what a farmer is you know it very well okay the farmer has to manage as well as operate under a common management so that he can take decisions if the operation ship is distributed right then decisions now nobody will be able to take so somebody has to take the responsibility of operating the farm so we need a fixed boundary because then only we can call it as a farm like we have a house in which we have a fixed boundary we have walls like that in farm it should have a fixed boundary then what is management we know it's very well nothing but it's coordination of all the activities the farmer has to do many activities you see land preparation he has to do intercultivation he has to do uh, weeding he has to do spraying you know he has to pay for the hired labor and then he has to harvest so there are a lot of activities right from land preparation to harvesting so coordinating all the activities is the role of the farmer so farmer is acting as a manager that is why in if you remember in farm cost concept we have seen so many cost right uh, so many costs cost a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 c3 if you remember c3 what is cost c3 it is the comprehensive cost overall cost it means what cost c2 plus 10% of cost c2 what is the 10% of cost c2 that is the managerial cost right because the farmer is performing the role of a manager he is coordinating all the activities that is why we have to pay him some kind of a salary so management is coordination of all the activities from land preparation to harvesting why so that we can realize profits not just profits sustainable profits so we know what is farm we know what is management let us see what is farm management now see farm management is a science okay like economics is it is an art as well as science why is it not because it teaches us how to do things why science because it helps us in making rational decisions there are some principles in economics which are proven and for example if you take the case of law of diminishing marginal returns it is proven wherever we have human element wherever there is natural element then the returns will be diminishing we know it well even though when we keep on increasing inputs after some point of time the returns will diminish that is the nature of the total product curve it will go up becomes constant then decreases so law of diminishing marginal returns is a proven concept so it is a science as well as an art so here we see farm management is an applied science why because it helps the farmer to make judicious decisions using rationality okay so judicious or correct decisions regarding what regarding the use of scarce farm resources scarce farm resources if the resources are not scarce for example sunlight it is not scarce you take fertilizer pesticide seed it is scarce capital is scarce so with the help of capital that is money we are purchasing seed fertilizers pesticides all are scarce so all these resources are scarce they are limited in quantities and the farmer has to invest to purchase all these things these resources are scarce so the farmer has to use them judiciously at the same time all these resources have got alternative uses you think of urea the farmer is cultivating two crops groundnut and cotton if he has got only one bag of urea he can use it for groundnut or he can use it for cotton or he can keep it aside so that he can use it in the next season so the resources are scarce and they have alternative uses so the farmer has to use the principles in farm management as it is an applied science to make judicious decisions so that he can make maximum profit on a sustainable basis so we have four keywords first keyword is judicious decisions second keyword is scarce resources third keyword is 
alternative uses and the fourth keyword is maximum sustainable profit so this is what farm management is farm management is an applied science which helps in helps in making judicious decisions about the utilization of scarce resources by the farmer the resources which have alternative use so that he can make maximum profit on a sustainable basis this is what is farm management or in other words simply we can say it is nothing but organization and operation of farms o and o farm management deals with organization and operation of farms with a view to make sustainable or continuous process so this is what farm management is we know what is farm we know what is management as well as we know what is farm management now farmers and decision making decision making is central to farm management if you thinking that you want to manage the farm effectively the farmer has to make judicious decisions so that the scarce resources which have alternative uses are used properly for making sustainable profit then the farmer needs to make correct decisions if the decision goes wrong the management will go wrong the management will go wrong and if the management of a farm goes wrong then the farmer may not be able to realize any profit at all right so decision making is central to farm management you see each and every decision that the farmer makes has an impact on the farm as well as farm household depending on decision he has to decide when to purchase a seed from whom to purchase a seed how to use the seed you know in which time period he has to sow the seed when to harvest you know where to sell you know for example from his farm to the market how he has to go you know how to you know schedule labors so he has to make all the decisions correctly rationally then only he will be able to sustain his farm as well as household why household because uh, farming being the primary occupation giving him more than 50% income he won't be able to uh, maintain his standard of living if he is not able to get any income from farming so he has to get sustainable profits from farming so that he can sustain his household then even if the farmer decides to do nothing it is called still it is a decision even when there is nothing the farmer is deciding let us not do like crop holiday you know some years ago uh, the farmers in andhra they declared crop holidays especially for rice because they were not getting sufficient market price so they declared, so they declared crop holidays they did not cultivate even a single acre in their village so it was a case study done by iim amdavad even now you see uh, during the uh, current prevailing chinese coronavirus or covid 19 situation now they are seeing so many cases of farmers not harvesting their crop you know the crop is ripe with fruits like watermelon or musk melon or brinjal the farmers are not harvesting that's the decision because when they harvest it and when they are taking to the market they are getting lesser price um, in one or two cases na i saw for watermelon the farmers were getting only 2.50 rupees per kg or 2 to 3 rupees per kg and uh, their cost of cultivation or cost of production it was uh, some 4 to 5 rupees per kg and they were getting only 3 rupees per kg if that is the case na then why to harvest the crop let us leave the crop let us leave the uh, produce on the crop itself that was the decision so even deciding to do nothing is a decision right now the more the farmer is aware of the decision making process the more sustainable the enterprise will be and more profit will come in the future so the farmer has to be aware of the decision making what decision he is making because that decision has got impact not only on the farm but also on the farm household so if he is making rational judicious conscious decisions then he will be able to sustain not only his farm but also farm household hmm, for a prolonged time period so now we know uh, the farmers and decision making right the concept behind that now let us see why farm management decisions are crucial you see we know what farm planning right because the farmer has to think what he is going to do in advance you know before the start of the agricultural year or before the start of the season the farmer has to plan this is what i'm going to do in the season right this is farm planning decide in detail right so what forms the basis of farm planning farm management decisions farm management decisions they form the basic basis of farm planning 
and when we have farm planning then what expression of farm planning in monetary terms in terms of money farm budgeting so when we have farm planning we have farm budgeting and then farm budgeting leads to farm accounting we are accounting each and every activity of the farm so only those farmers who have got you know sound farm accounts they will be able to have sound farm business because the one who has control over farm accounting has the control over his entire business like we if we have control over our mind and body we'll be able to have control over our lives right if we don't have control over body then we won't be able to live properly if we were not able to have control over our mind then we won't be able to take proper decisions decisions decide life over here farm management decisions they lead to farm planning right first step of farm planning is farm management decisions then farm planning expression of farm planning in terms of money farm budgeting when we have proper budgeting and all then we'll be able to maintain proper records right and then if the records are proper in farm accounting then we'll be able to manage the business proper so this is the beauty of farm management decisions right now basically what do we mean by farm management decisions because in general the farm management decisions help the farmer to decide what to produce how much to produce how to produce and when to buy and sell i getting this message behind what to produce there we saw it in economic principles now these are what to produce right we know between input output we have got three different relationships we have got factor product relationship we have got factor factor relationship and then we have got product product relationship so what to produce comes in product product relationship what to produce and then how much to produce it comes in factor product relationship and then how to produce how to produce least cost so it comes in factor factor relationship right using factor factor relationship the farmer will be able to know how to produce using the principle uh, behind factor product relationship the farmer will be able to identify how much to produce what is the optimal input level and what is the optimal output level then what to produce using the principles uh, that are applied in product product relationship the farmer will be able to decide what to produce which enterprise combination he has to go for so farm management decisions as i said applied science it helps the farmer in realizing all these objectives and the farm management decisions can be classified into these three components first component is organizational management decisions second one is administrative management decisions and the third one is marketing management decisions so decisions pertaining to organization administrative and marketing all three are pillars of farm management decisions three pillars of farm management decisions let us see one by one this is a chart this chart will tell you for example if i tell you organization management decision or problem decision whatever just a word okay so organization management decision if i say what it includes it again is bifurcated into two so organization management decision can be categorized into strategic decisions and operational decisions strategic and operational you see strategic it means what the decisions which have long lasting effects decisions which involve heavy investments for example extending or uh, increasing your acreage the farmer is cultivating one hectare of land he is trying to increase uh, his land holding into 2 hectare so from 1 hectare he is going for 2 hectare so that is a decision which requires heavy investment because he has to purchase with lakhs and lakhs of money and then the effect of the decision will be long lasting right long lasting effect for example he cannot turn down his decision because he has already paid right and then he has purchased land if he is going back in his decision now then he has to face heavy invest heavy penalty for example let us take the farmer constructing a greenhouse the farmer has constructed it so it greenhouse using 10 lakh rupees so it is a you know strategic decision because heavy investment and it is going to have lifelong effect and the farmer cannot turn back in his decision because once the greenhouse is constructed if the farmer wants to pull it pull it down then he has to face 
heavy penalty for it, heavy cost for it. So, and then we have operational management decisions. That is, they are more frequent. It involves relatively small investments. For example, the farmer cultivating groundnut crop, he thinks that uh, next season I'll go for cotton. Or in that season itself, the farmer has been go for cotton. For example, he has just sown the seed, uh, cost of some 4,000, 5,000 rupees. And if he wants to turn back in his decision, what he will do? He'll plow the field again, and then he'll sow some other uh, seed, right, of any other crop. So that decision is more frequent because the farmer is going to take every season. Or to take, uh, instead of uh, farm laborer, the farmer can take off uh, machinery. In this season, the farmer is thinking, let me not use farm labor, let me bring in machinery, right? And he can change it also. If the machinery is not available, he can go back to farm labor, right? It doesn't take much time. It doesn't take much investment, right? He has to just pay the rental fee if he is not using the machinery, some 1,600, 2,000 rupees. So that is operational decision. So we, in organizational management decisions, we have two bifurcations or two components. First one is, strategic management decisions and then we have operational management decisions okay so now when does a farmer make strategic man management decisions that is decisions which involve heavy investment and decisions which have life long effects or long lasting effects first deciding on the size of the farm how much farm size he should have whether one hectare or whether he has to increase or the way whether he has to cut it down then machinery and livestock program, whether he wants to purchase tractor, power tiller, whatever. And then construction of farm building. Once the building is constructed, it requires heavy investment. It will have long lasting effect because they, that building is going to be utilized by the farmer for 10 or 12 years. So farm building construction, then irrigation, conservation, reclamation programs. All these require heavy, heavy investment. They have long lasting effect and once the farmer has decided and implemented all these decisions. The farmer cannot take a position back because they have been set, right? Then operational decisions. So more frequently you can make every season, every day, every week, like what to produce. In the beginning of the season, you, the farmer can decide, let me produce groundnut. Or you can change all of a sudden, let us go for cotton. What to produce. Selection of enterprises. The farmer can also think of you know, the combination of enterprise, whether you can go for crop plus uh, livestock or crop plus livestock plus poultry, like that you can go for selection of enterprises on the basis of the principle that we have studied in product, product relationship, what to produce, then how much to produce enterprise means, how much to produce. We know very well that the more the farmer use the inputs, the more he is going to get output, but only up to certain time period after that time period. Even when the farmer is using more inputs, he is not going to get output. You know, that is what we have studied in factor product relationship. Then how to produce, sorry, how much to produce, right? That we know factor product, then how to produce, how to produce using least cost method, least cost combination that we saw in factor factor relationship. Then when to produce timing of production, timing is very important, right? For example, he has to sow in that uh, window, which is available, sowing window in June or July. If he's sowing the crop in August, then he won't be able to harvest the crop because there won't be any crop at all affected because that is completely under natural process. We won't be having, we won't be able to harvest the crop. So in the correct season, the current time period, the correct duration of crop he has to go for. So when to produce is very important. Then first one is over organization management decisions. We saw we have again two components or sub components. We can say strategic management decisions and operational management decisions. We saw what comes over here. Then Administrative problem decisions, what we have in administrative management decisions, we have financing the farm business. Finance, it is a very critical word now. We are short of finance, especially farmers. They live on borrowed capital, right? Uh, a recent survey says almost 80% of farm households, whether it is small, marginal or large, they borrow. You know, they don't save sufficiently. They can do agriculture properly in a sustainable manner only when the sufficient funds are available. So they rely on borrowed funds, whether institutional or uninstitutional, right? So the farmer has to go for optimum utilization of funds. He has to use the funds optimally, right? And then acquisition of funds. Okay. One thing is the farmer has to use funds optimally, right? Then most important thing is acquisition of funds. How to get funds? That's another thing. So the farmer has to decide 
how to get funds, proper agency, from where to get, whether to get from institutional sources like banks or to get from uninstitutional sources like money lenders and time. What is the appropriate time of getting the funds? Because if it is taking crop loan now, then within uh, six months to one year, he has to repay it. Within one year, the farmer has to repay. So he has to take the credit, you know, in such a time that he'll, he'll be able to have the crop harvested and he'll be able to market the produce so that he can pay it back, right? So the farmer, while making decisions pertaining to financing the farm business, he has to focus on optimum fund utilization. Apart from that, uh, no, or uh, correct acquisition of funds, the proper agency as well as time. Then supervision of work, because we are dealing with administrative management decisions. It means what? Work supervision, operational timing, whether the labors are working efficiently, you know, whether the inputs are given to the crop at correct time, whether we have taken all the pesticidal sprays. You know? So supervision of work. And then accounting and bookkeeping. Each and every activity that is happening at the farm level, the farmer has to make an account. He has to you know, keep all the bills with him so that he can uh, look for the profit and loss. Right? Then adjustment of farm business to government programs and policies. The farmer cannot operate in isolation. The farmers, they cannot operate in isolation. They have to operate within the society's welfare. All of a sudden, if the government decides to ban wheat exports, for example, in foreign markets, the farmers are getting good prices for wheat. For example, some countries are demanding like China or Thailand, if they are demanding a wheat, right? The farmer understand very well, uh, then uh, if we export wheat, we'll be getting better prices than prevailing at domestic level, right? But the government can ban wheat exports. So thinking that they'll be getting more price in the export markets, the farmer should not increase his acreage of wheat. He has to see what is the uh, trade policy of the host government. Why the government is banning wheat exports? Because if the farmers are exporting wheat, you know, whatever wheat they have to the foreign countries, then what will be available for at the domestic level? You know, for the country's people, they won't be able to have sufficient wheat. So government is a welfare state. It has to you know, take into account the welfare of all of the citizens from producers to consumers. So the farmer has to adjust to farming, not only farmer, but all, all of us. We have to adjust uh, our business activities to government programs and policies. Here, government by me, welfare state. Government is a welfare state. Then marketing is very easy, right? We know what to buy, when to buy, from whom to buy, how to buy, and selling, what to sell, when to sell, where to sell, how to sell. While selling, the farmer has to keep in mind that he has to utilize all the marketing utilities. We know it, right? What are utilities? Utility of any good is the property of that good to satisfy consumers want. For example, if this is a marker, if this marker has to serve my utility, then this marker has to write well. Okay. If the marker is not writing well, then it has got no use to me. Right. Similarly, the farmer has to make sure that he will be able to harness all the utilities in the market. So what are the utilities we have? First is farm utility, then place utility, then time utility, then possession utility, then information utility. So we have got five different utilities. The farmer has to uh, take judicious decisions so that he'll be, able to, he'll be able to make use of all these utilities, right? So now we have seen all the three basic pillars of farm management decisions, organizational management decisions, administrative management decisions, and marketing management decisions okay now you see so in organizational management decisions what we see what we see or what we saw is these are operational management decisions and then strategic management decisions right so this operational management decisions is also called as tactical decision tactical decision what is tactical we can change your tactics right from time to time if this uh, whiteboard marker is not working i can change another whiteboard marker Right. But if this classroom is not working, I won't be able to shift to another classroom. That is difficult for me, right? So tactical, you can change your tactic. So operational management decisions are also called as tactical decisions. Your objective question, right? Then it involves less investment, which is very well. And we can make it more frequently, right? More frequently you can make. 
for example, you take harvesting, whether we can go for machinery or we can invite farm laborers, that you can make every day, you can make the decision. Then effect is very short lived. And now if you're taking decision, the effect is very short lived, right? And we can reverse. Once the farmer has decided, he has to go with farm machinery. But um, the farmer realizes that farm machinery at present is not available. He has to go with farm laborers. Then he can immediately change it. If he has paid some deposit to farm machinery, let it go away, no problem at all, because it is less cost. He can go back to farm laborers. Then here the important uh, decision-making particulars are what to produce, how to produce, and how much to produce using agricultural production economics principles that we have studied, right? Then strategic management decisions are also called as basic decisions. Why basic? Basic science, pure science. Basic means it is final, right? It is long lasting. We won't be able to reverse. If the farmer has constructed a farm building, it is not possible for him to reverse that decision. Why? Because it involves heavy investments. If he is going to pull down the entire building, then he has to face heavy penalty. Or he has to face higher cost so involves heavy investment it is made less frequently right because only once in 10 or 20 years the farmer will be deciding right right we had to construct farm building or we if you are having your own house right we can take the decision only once in a lifetime you know only once in a lifetime you can decide or once or twice whatever your economic position is you have a house Every day you cannot decide, right? Let us have a house constructed like that. You cannot make any decision every day, right? But we can make decisions of what to eat every day, right? What to eat every day is tactical decision and um, whether to construct a house or not is basic decision. Then effect is long lasting. It cannot be reversed. Then for example, as we have a size of farm, farm size, machinery to be used like tractor, purchase of a tractor. That decision is going to last at least for 10 years. The farmer cannot reverse then farm building construction. Once it is constructed, the farmer cannot take a position back. If he is taking the decision of pulling the farm building down, then he has to face heavy cost, right? Then, so in operational management decisions, we have the basic decisions, particulars, right? What to produce, how to produce, and how much to produce, which we have seen. So what to produce, the farmer has to decide before the season before the cropping season. If he is taking after the cropping season or in between, it is of no use. He has to take before the cropping season. That is whether to produce crop or whether to go for livestock or both. And here in this decision making process, the farmer should aim at profit maximization. So what to produce in the decision, the goal of the farmer is to make profit maximization. There is no need to increase production, right? There is need to increase profit because in economics, we don't, deal, we don't deal with increasing production because we can't. We have basic uh, agriculture science for them. We can deal with how to increase profit or how to have the same production minimum cost, right? So here, using the principles of product-product relationship, we can uh, make the farmer to decide to aim at profit maximization, right? Then how to produce, how to produce. So here the farmer, he has to take a decision of appropriate combination of resources so that he can go for cost minimization, right? For example, if five units of urea and 10 units of potash, it is going to give some 100 kg of cotton, for example, right? And again, if 10 units of urea, 10 units of potash, again, if it is going to give you same 100 kg of cotton, right? then why to go for the second option, which is costlier. Let us stick with the first option where we are going to get the same quantity of cotton at minimum cost. If that is the scenario, then using the principles of factor factor relationship, you know, we can realize cost minimization. And this realization of cost minimization is on the basis of a decision of how to produce. Then how much to produce, we know very well, right? How much to produce? If the farmer keep on adding inputs, it is not possible for the farmer to keep on receiving output because after some point of time, the output is going to decline. So the farmer should stop. So we should know what is the optimal output level and optimal input level. So we have seen 
under factor product relationship the formula right to obtain optimal output level that is mr equal to nc we also know the formula to obtain optimal input level that is mvp equal to mic what is mvp marginal value product what is mic margin input cost what is mr marginal returns what is mc marginal cost what is the formula for mc marginal cost is equal to delta tc upon delta y you know because we have output level now so denominator we have y so delta tc upon delta y additional change in total cost to additional change in output right then what is mic marginal input cost so here we have optimal input level so in the denominator we should have x so mic that is marginal input cost is equal to delta tc upon delta x additional change in total cost to additional change in input what is mvp marginal value product or marginal value of product the formula is delta tvp upon delta x because we have input level so what is the additional change in total value product divided by addition change in input how to obtain how to obtain tvp we know why output so the quantity of output multiplied by price per unit of output you know that is y into p of y will give you tvp so delta tvp what is delta change so additional change in tvp upon additional change in x will give you mvp what is mr mr is something but marginal returns formula is delta tr upon delta y because here we are dealing with optimal output level so y should come in denominator so delta tr upon delta y you know so additional change in total returns to the additional change in output this is mr so mr and tvp sorry uh, tr and tv both are same total returns and total value of product both are same so only in the denominator we are making changes right so we can take all these basic decisions under operational management decision category by using economic principles right and then when to produce that is very important then strategic management management decision first is size of farm size of farm is how to decide size of farm because uh, each and every farm size uh, it has its own plus and minuses pros and cons for example small farms we can expect higher productivity because our efficiency will be more so we can realize higher productivity we take you uh, know large farms where because of the operation of economies of scale we will be able to have output at lesser cost lesser per unit cost so each farm has its own advantage so where how to decide the size of the farm so size of the farm is influenced by various factors we have economic factors social factors natural factors climate factors weather weather elements policy factors like you know government's role if the government has banned export of wheat if you are cultivating wheat in one hectare what you will do as a farmer you will not try to increase the wheat uh, wheat cultivation area because the wheat export is banned for 2 years if you are increasing the wheat cultivation area na then you will be having more wheat you won't be able to sell in the market so whether either you will be maintaining the same acreage or you will bring it down right then the size of farm ultimately you have to aim at profit maximization then machinery and labor program here in the case of machinery and labor program how to utilize labor we have to go for appropriate resource combination the basic thing is appropriate resource combination so that the farmer can decide how to use the resources at less cost then construction of farm buildings it also comes in strategic management decision so the farmer has to think very well he has to go cautiously tread cautiously in constructing farm building because it requires heavy investment and he cannot you know turn back in his decision if he is turning back then he has to pay or face a heavy price for it right then irrigation conservation reclamation programs there are so many conservation programs like like soil conservation programs water conservation programs that the farmer can decide to implement in his farm on his farm right he can decide so many things he can go for mulching or contouring or there are so mulching bunding contouring you know like there are so many uh, technical practices as well as technologies available he can try to install drip irrigation facility in his farm right it requires heavy investment it will have long lasting effect 
so the farmer if he is going for either a soil conservation measure or whether he is taking some irrigation measure he has to choose that program or measure which is most appropriate to his farm and it is more economical both are important right then administrative management decision here we have here the farmer has to decide on all these particulars financing the farm business supervision accounting then adjusting the farm production program for fsa fsa right fsi like that we have seen you know in food products and all it is the quality indicator fsi we have hccp and in india we have fsi right so financing farm business supervision accounting adjusting the farm production program so all these are the uh, decision parameters where the farmer has to decide for example financing farm business is very important for the farmer to use his funds optimally you know he cannot use it more or he cannot use less he has to use optimal because fund is limited it is crucial the fund has got alternative use and apart from the optimal utilization of funds the farmer has to decide from whom to borrow when to borrow and how to borrow for that he needs what he needs the cash flow budgeting you know in cash flow budgeting the farmer will be able to realize uh, at which time period he is falling in short of funds that particular time period the farmer has to identify and then he has to decide uh, that when to borrow from whom to borrow whether institutional or, or an institution how to borrow how to borrow means what is the prevailing interest rate if he is borrowing some 5 lakhs or 10 lakh rupees then he'll be uh, has to he has to pledge something right mortgage he has to give something as mortgage whether land or any property or using his gold ornaments he has to pledge that right and then he has to get the money then supervision so this is the first decision parameter that comes in administrative management decision the second one is supervision the farmer has to keep a close watch on all the activities right from land preparation intercultural activity uh, the application of fertilizer spraying of pesticides whatever the activities are till harvesting and even after harvesting he has to take decisions on where to store and you know, where to market how to transport it to the marketing yard so he has to keep a close watch on all the activities that is why he is a manager he has to supervise then accounting the farmer has to keep a record of all the activities how much he has you know obtained loan and how much he is using it so each and every activity should be recorded quantity as well as value of that so that he will be able to have control on his farm business then adjusting the farm production programs as i told you earlier whatever resources the farmer has got he has to adjust so that his program of farm production is consistent with the government policies you know taking the example again if the government has banned export of wheat there is no point for the farmer to increase acreage of wheat because you know very well that if he is going for increased area under wheat cultivation then he won't be able to market it so the government policies the policies prevailing in district level state level national level the farmer has to take due cognizance otherwise he won't be able to have us business to run sustainable profit then marketing management decisions the last decision the farmer has to decide on buying and selling in buying what he has to buy he has to buy inputs at least cost right if the farmer is getting inputs you take um, like mangozeb right mangozeb is given by so many different companies in different brands uh, some brands are costlier some are cheaper the farmer is able to know that it is only about the brand the generic name Man mangozeb is the same in all these things then you have to go for the brand which is result oriented as well as it is cheaper and there is no need to go for fancy things right then the farmer has to decide agency that is input shop uh, pesticide outlet timing and quantity to be purchased even while buying farm supplies the farmer has to go for least cost input and then he has to decide the agency he has to decide the timing he has to decide quantity for example if he is going to so crop in the next season there is no point for the farmer to grow to go and get the inputs once the crop is sown before sowing the of the crop the farmer has to decide buying inputs which are required for his crop if he is going to cultivate on only one acre of land ground net there is no point in purchasing fertilizers 
that is sufficient for five acres of land because ultimately is going to have only one acre of ground. Land. Okay, so the quantity is important, timing is important, as well as agency is important, right? Then selling, the farmer should adjust the should try to adjust the time of selling. You know, for example, when he is harvesting, immediately if he is selling, right? Then there will be glut in the market. He won't be able to get good price. So you can go for you know, changing the time of selling. At the same time, apart from just changing the time of selling, the farmer can think of adding value to his produce. You know, that is marketing his produce at a higher rate. How you can market at a higher rate? Only when he is able to utilize all these utilities: farm utility, place utility, time utility, possession utility and information utility. What is farm utility? Changing the form of produce. The farmer is getting lesser price for groundnut. He can sell, that, sell it as groundnut powder or groundnut oil. So changing form. So the farmer can enhance the value, that is enhance the price of groundnut by changing the form of groundnut, right? At the same time, even without changing the form of the produce, the farmer can realize higher value, that is higher price by changing the place of selling. If the farmer is getting lesser price for groundnut in Junagad, if he is getting higher price somewhere, for example, in Gulbarga, someplace in Karnataka, then if, he, if it is possible, he, he, to, he has to decide to sell it over at that place where he'll be getting good, good money. So place of selling. Time of selling, that is changing the time period of selling. Instead of selling immediately, if the farmer's financial position is good, then he has to store, he has to wait for one or two months and then he can sell. So you see now, even without changing the form, even without changing the place, value can be added to the produce. That is, the farmer can get more returns just by changing the time of selling. Then possession. Possession means what? Ownership. The farmer has, from farmer, the groundnut has gone to village trader, right? The farmer has sold to 10 rupees per kg. If the village trader is selling at 24 rupees per kg, the farmer cannot claim his share because it has been already settled. So the ownership, it gives utility. The village trader gets 15 rupees extra you know, without doing anything. The farmer is getting 10 rupees by doing all the activities. Then information utility. Information adds value. Uh, you know the case of mango. You know, we have organic mango. You know, some, some farmers are selling mangoes, organic mango. For one 10 kg box, they are selling for 600, 700 rupees, gir kesar mango. And normal mangoes, which are not branded as organic, the farmer is selling for 400 rupees for 10 kg. So just the information can fetch higher value. So value can be added just by loading some information to it. So the farmer can should think, should decide on what type of information he has to load on his produce so that he can realize higher profit. Then what to sell, when to sell, where to sell, whom to sell. In selling, the farmer has to decide no, what to sell, whether to sell it as groundnut or groundnut powder or groundnut oil, when to sell, at what time he has to sell, whether he has to sell now, that is immediately after harvest or he has to wait for one or two months. Where to sell, to whom he is going to sell, whether he is going to sell to village trader or wholesaler or directly to consumer. Then, so that is whom to sell, right? Then where to sell whether he'll be selling in this place itself that is farm gate level or whether he is going to take it to the marketing yard or whether he is going to use trans transportation or logistics to sell it at other place so all these are basic decisions so so far what we have seen is we have seen farm managing decisions so in this class what we covered if you could see we covered some basic definitions first we know what is farm we know what is management we also came to know what is farm management you know then we saw what is the importance of farm management decisions. We came to know that farm management decisions forms the basis of farm planning. Without farm planning, the farmer cannot go for farm budgeting. Why? Because expression of farm planning in terms of money is called farm budgeting. So without farm planning, there is no farm budgeting. And the, when the farmer doesn't have farm planning, farm budgeting, then he cannot go for farm accounting. So if the farmer has got control over his farm accounts, he'll be able to have control over the entire business. So, and if the farmer wants to control his entire business, then he has to decide. So on what basis the farmer can make decisions? Uh, so we can classify decisions into three. First is organizational management decision, then 
administrative management decisions then marketing management decisions management problem both are same right so in organization management decisions again we have got two sub categories what is the first one strategic strategic means it it requires long invest it, it requires a heavy investment and it has got long lasting effect strategic then operational it means everyday activity every day we can make a decision so investment is less then the effect is for only for a short period right in that we have got so many decision particulars right in strategic the farmer can decide on size of farm machinery construction of farm building then uh, having some programs on his farm that is regarding to uh, regarding irrigation conservation reclamation programs an operation decision it is every day every day decision or decision taken less frequently like what to produce how much to produce how to produce and when to produce then in administrative management decision we have three uh, four important decision particulars first is financing the farm business then supervision of work then accounting and bookkeeping then adjustment of farming business to government policies and programs so fsi you know the uh, uh, food uh, safety indicator fsi so we have fsa then marketing decisions are very simple buying and selling in buying what we have what when from whom how to buy in selling what when where and how it is very important in selling the farmer has to make use of all the marketing activities so hope you understood the basic concepts uh, behind farm management decisions with this we'll complete this lecture do you have any other thing no that's it with this we'll complete this lecture uh, meet you soon till then stay safe bye